الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمسلمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين تتوفاهم الملائكة طيبين يقولون سلام عليكم سلام عليكم ادخلوا الجنة بما كنتم تعملون صدق الله العلي العظيم Dear brothers and sisters, we thank Allah for many ni'am, a lot of gifts, a lot of blessings that He has given us. Alhamdulillah, we manage to finish fasting the month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah, and the qiyam and other ibadat that we are doing in Qur'an, ibadat, that were in the, noble, in the holy month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, we got a lot of training, a lot of learning, college, tadrib, exercises that we did in the month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gave us this month of Ramadan as a present, as a gift. Because it's a turning ground and we learned a lot of things, alhamdulillah. We learned subra, patience, how to hold our heart and body and not to do sins, to do mistakes, and even we held our hearts and bodies from things that are halal during the day, like eating, drinking. We learn the subra of holding. From that glass of water, although it was, the mouth was dry, and you know, this month, it, this time of the year in Nairobi, it is hotter than usual. Although a lot of thirst, but we held, and we didn't drink that glass of water during the day. Or also when the stomach was rumbling with pain because of acid and no food in the stomach, we held on the pain of due of hunger because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told us to eat when we are fasting during the daytime. But here, Ramadan has left. Do we leave all this training, all this coaching, all this tadrib, the exercise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us in the training? Should we throw it into the dustbin? Now, because Ramadan is over, because, as you, need, as you know, dear brothers and sisters, we, we don't worship Ramadan, but we worship Rabba Ramadan. So even Ramadan has gone. We should continue in the same spirit. Of course, the first thing that comes is Sita to Mishawal. The fasting of six days in this month of Shawwal, and it is still there, it has not left Shawwal. And if you find it difficult to fast continuously, you can fast one day and rest the second day, second and third day, until you finish six days. And the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi said, Man swama Ramadan wa atba'u sitat min shawal ka'anna ma swama dahran the one who fasted the month of Ramadan and then followed to six days is as if he has fasted the whole year, meaning he was going to get the edge. 
the reward, the thawab of fasting the whole year. Rawahu Muslim. Hadith Sahih narrated by Imam Muslim. Rahmatullahi alayhi. And here you can see, and many times in our durus and our kutubah, we have insisted on the mathematics and the science behind it. Even in this hadith, there is a lot of mathematics, science. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Al hasanatu bi ashti amthaliha. The minimum you get is not by one get two from Allah, is by one get ten. But in fact, it can, can go up to sabamiya, it can go up to 700. Multiply by 700 or even more, depending on the onia, depending on your class, depending on the difficulty. You did that, Ibadah. They are multiplied, multiplied. You are listening to this khutbah, it's only one khutbah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told his malaika to write 10 khutbah, you are listening to me. Allahu Akbar. So if you fast 30 days, you multiply by 10, you get 300 days. You fast six of Shawwal, you multiply by 10, you get 60. 300 plus 60 is 360 days. Simple mathematics, simple arithmetic that is there in the hadith of Rasul. And now we said here in many turus during Ramadan and after Ramadan, we highlight this science and mathematics that is there in this in the noble Quran and Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So during Ramadan, we didn't take that cigarette and smoked. Now, after Ramadan, we go back to smoking? No, we should not go back because we lose the benefits. And we many times during Ramadan. We used to recite this verse. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum. Limada ya Allah? La'allakum tattaqun. If you look at the translation of this verse, oh, you will believe fasting has been prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you. For what reason, Ya Rabbana, oh our Lord, what is reason? Why are you want to fast? Want us to fast Ramadan? He gave us the reason, La Allah So that you become good fearing, righteous, first class Muslims, not lower class Muslims. And here you can see why Allah out of his love, he doesn't want to remain as second class Muslims. He wants us to raise us to the Rajat al Muttaqoon, first as Muslims. He wants to raise us. Of course, Alhamdulillah, we believe in Allah. No deity, nobody, nothing is worthy of worship except Him. We believe in Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Khatam al Nabiin, and there's no other messenger will come after Him. We believe in Yawm Al-Qiyamah that will be taken out of the graves for his son. But that is not enough. Allah says, no, I want you to go up so that you become first Muslims. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ I just want you to believe, believe as women in bus, Muslim in a bus. No, Muttaqoon, the high class Muslim. Why, why does Allah want us to become first class Muslims? He says, we should look at the last hour in this dunya. Not in the Qabr, not in Yawm al Qiyamah. The last hour before you leave this dunya. You are and me are in the deathbed. We can imagine you are in the deathbed. Either you are dying at home in front of family, in front of friends, or you are dying in hospital, also besides family, besides the doctors who are surrounding you. That is the last hour in those dangers that I want to concentrate. Live alone the cupboard, live alone the, the grave, 
and it's azab. Leave it. Let's start this hour. Nobody has washed you. Nobody has put kafan, and nobody has carried you to the to 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 be prayed upon. Salatul Mayyit, Salatul Janaza. They haven't done that because this is the time Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala tells us very clearly to the first class Muslim, Alladina tatawafahum al malaika tu tayibina yakuluna salamun alaykum. If you look at the meaning of this verse, and Allah here in this verse addresses to Al Muttaqun, not to every Tom, Dick, and Harry, or every Muslim, no! To Al Muttaqun, the first class Muslim, he says that the ones, Tatawafahul Malaika, the Malaika, they take their souls in the deathbed at home or in the deathbed as hospital. They come there. Toyibin in a nice way. Allah Akbar. Allahumma janabi. Not only that. Yaquluna and they tell them. They don't come with their mouth closed. The malaika tell this person. And we pray to Allah, it is you and me, insha'Allah. Salamun alaykum, peace be upon you. Udkhulu jannata bima kuntum ta'maloon. Allahu Akbar. Start preparing yourself for the goodies, for the nice smells of paradise. And you start smelling the good fragrance, the good perfume that comes from Jannah, and yet you are at home. There is no color, there is no panic, there is no worry, and there is no shouting. Because for the other people, <laughs> when it become the Malakul Mout, he doesn't come with flash, flying, with smiling face. They don't come with a smiling face. But they come already their hand. Basi to ID him, they've already wrote, stretched their hands, not stretching only, by this maqam min hadith. Especially for the kuffar wal munafiqina wal fujjar, the very bad people. The malaika already taking a club, and it's not a club, but the Maasai club that you see them walking made of wood. This is maqam min hadith. These are made of metal, iron from Jahannam. They are only big. They are not only big, but they are hot because they are coming from Jahannam. They already come this. There is no salam alaikum. There is no taking a toyibin. They are not removing a soul in a nice way. But they come with these clubs. So what, what do this bad person do? He's not in the grave yet. Some of them will say, Ma kunna na'mal bisu. Some of them will be shouting. One of them will be lying in the lake. Oh, Malaika, I was not doing anything bad in this dunya. As if he's cheating the Malaika. You know the Malaika, when he comes, he comes with three details. Who to take the soul from? Who to cause him to die? Where to take his soul? Whether in a hospital or at home, here or in India, he's already got the details. And what kind of person this person is supposed, how to take his, the technique of removing cells. His soul is also well determined, well written in the register of the Malaika when he comes. You remember the first, the famous story of the man who was in Palestine. And uh, he was sitting with Nabi Sulaiman, alayhi salam. Then the man told Nabi Sulaiman, who is this guy? He's looking at me all the time. He told him, this is Malakul Mouth. Ah! <laughs> Please order the wind. You know, our, our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given Nabi Sulaiman, he could order the wind as a drone, as an aeroplane, as a helicopter. Please, Ya Nabi Allah, oh, Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rasulullah, 
take me to India, take me away from this guy. So Nabi Suleiman took him, uh, the wind came and took this person to India. When he reached India, as soon as he landed, he saw the same man and he took his soul. Before he, he took his soul, he told him, you see, I was given a list here that I should take your soul in India. And the time was approaching. You are still in Palestine. I wondered how I'm going to take your soul in India, whom we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has planned everything. So he took his soul in India. So when he says, Ma kunna na'mal nisu, when he shouts, Oh, I was not doing bad. <laughs> My like telling all the details are here. Don't try to get an advocate or you try to defend yourself. These are not this, uh, this cause of this dunya, full of zulm and uh, corruption and uh, bribing. It's not like that. You can't bribe here. We, and then the other one say, Kunna mustadhafuna fil arz. Kunna mustadhafina fil arz. We were suppressed in this dunya, so we could not pray, we could not do salah, we could not do song, we could not do nothing. So, ya yeah, Malaika, don't teach me, because not my mistake. Another one will be shouting, Rabbi Jiuni la Ali Amalu Sali Hanfi Matarat. Another will say, Oh Allah, return me. This, this is not the hour of. This last hour is not mine for death. Return me to the dunya. Remove me from this hospital. Remove me from this deathbed at home. Take me back. So that I can do good work, good deeds, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever I have left, I do it. But you see, <laughs> as I told you earlier, the Malaika go fully dressed, they know who, who, what to do to this guy and what to do to that guy. Because all the deaths are there. They won't listen to this person trying to defend himself. In fact, other ones will be asked. When the Malaika, before he hits him, he asks him, oh, where are those Jesus to call? Instead of calling Allah, you, call, you had other people who are better than Allah. You thought they were better than Allah. We know what they reply. anna, they ran away from us. And these are some Muslims who when in difficulty, they don't go to Allah. They can't get a child, they go to the Sahara, which doctor? They go to the jinn. They say, oh, married now three years. My wife is not conceiving. And the witch doctor will tell him, no, there's a shaitan who comes at night. He has married with your wife. They always tell them lies. He comes at night and he has married with your wife. Dear brothers and sisters, don't listen, don't believe such crap. There's nobody who comes and has married with your wife at night. There's no gym. And then he tells you what? I want a red camel, three white goats, <laughs> you bring them and we remove this gin from your wife. Utter nonsense. The other one, they go to Sheikh, a holy person has been buried there in the grave for years. Bones are rotten. They go there, Ya yeah, Sheikh, we can't conceive. Can you help us? Instead of going to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's Allah. Who has created? هذا خلق الله فأروني ماذا خلق الذين من دوني بل الظالمون في ظلال مبين. Allah says, "This children that I create for you, it is the help of Allah. Nobody has no shaykh, wali. Will I go to? Oh, you go to? Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, Hussein is grandson of a Rasul, and you start kneeling in front of his grave." Oh, you call him even when you're in Nairobi. Yeah, Hussein, I want a child. Hussein will not do anything, dear brother and sister. And this part is the saddest part is a Muslim who has been fasting Ramadan, who is praying his five daily prayers. 
And he starts crying also. This is very sad. He's crying. He's crying to Malaika. Please give me one hour. I go to the cupboard. I remove that zakat, which I was not paying, and I will pay now. Give me one, one month or one year so that I go to my cupboard. I remove that money and go for Hajj, and Hajj is coming very soon. But you see, he was worshipping his dollars, he was worshipping his, his shillings. That's why he just did Salah and so. But he was not doing Zakat. He was no glory for Hajj. And also give me some time, I send money to help our brothers in Palestine. Who have been slaughtered day and night. I send money now to them. If you could give me a short while, I could collect my money from the cupboard and do all the things, the cupboard, and do all the things, the cupboard, the hajj, and also helping the mujahideen. But dear brothers and sisters, that's not the end. We are still with this first class Muslim. Allah says, يَوْمَ نَحْشُرُ الْمُتَّقِينَ لَلْرَحْمَانِ وَفْلَى Allah says the day, that frightening day, when you and me are coming out of the grave, and Allah says on that day, نَحْشُرُ الْمُتَّقِينَ will remove the mutaqina from their graves. Checking them where? Of course, checking them for hisab and also checking them to Jannah, because it's al-mutaqoon. They're not going to hell. But how are they going to be taken? People will be standing on that day. Their legs swollen because of long standing. Fasty, sweating. But not the first class Muslim. Ila Rahman, Allah says, Ila Rahman, to the most merciful, to the most gracious. And Allah has already told us, in the rahmat Allah, karibun min al muhsineen in the translation of this verse, Ibn Abbas, in his tafsir, he says that the muttaqin, the first class Muslims are removed from the graves and sent to Jannah, not on their feet, but the malaika are there, come to their grave to receive them. Ibn Abbas says, Rukbanan, they will be given mounts. These are better than horses that you can imagine. These are better than camels that you can imagine. They are coming from paradise. They are beautified with the diamonds and rubies. And all these jewels, they are, these, these animals are there and they are receiving them. And the malaika tells them to climb and they go to paradise, not on their feet. Because the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, قال الحبيب يحشر الناس على ثلاثة أصناف. People during the Yawm Al-Qiyama, they are taken out of their graves in three types. Swim Fan Mujah, there's a group that are going to walk on their feet. On Yawm al Qiyamah. When sinful allow you him, other people will be walking on their face, rubbing on the soil of, of Yawm al Mahsha. And sinful Rukban. And the last one, and this is where we are, they will be taken to paradise on horses, on these mounds, on these animals from paradise. They are beautiful, they are decorated, and they have got a nice perfume because everything from paradise has got, even the soil of paradise has got nice smell. Misk, beautiful, and they are now walking. There is no, no sweating, no swelling of their feet because of long standing. And this, can, can you imagine? 
This is a, a better type of passport than any president in the world has got. Because the presidents of the world, what do they get? These big border borders, these huge, many cars, you know, so that you don't know which, which car he is, is hiding, you know. All fear and all and moving, all the noise on the road and putting out dirty, smoking, foul smelling smoke from these motorbikes and these cars. And many of them, I counted the other day, 100 cars are following a president. But these people, they don't need that. These, they don't produce any dirty smoke, foul smelling smoke. They don't make any noise, and they are moving, Allahumma jalna, with these beautiful animals to paradise. Then as they approach the Sirat, they don't panic. La Faza! They don't get very anxious. Inna al-muttaqina fi makamin ameen. Allah says, indeed, the God-fearing Muslims the first class Muslim will be in a state of trust, a state of sakina, even when they see the Jahannam. And on top of it, there is the bridge. Ya'aburu, they cross this bridge, aminin, trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, smiling, full of confidence, full of sakina, peace in their mind. Allahumma jalla minhum. Because Allah says, وَإِن مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقْضِيًّا ثُمَّ نُنَجِ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا وَنَذَرُ الْظَالِمِينَ فِيهَا جِثِيًّا Allah says, everyone will pass across Jahannam, whether they like it or not. And the kuffar and the munafikina will fall into the jail. They will not be able to cross. But not all mutaqeen. They are not only passing. They are, remember, they are on mounts. They are not even using their feet. Crossing the jahannam on top of it. All this in the noble Quran, dear brother and sister. Thumma nunajil ladhina taqaw. Here you see it. Al taqaw li mutaqeen. These are the ones that we are going to save them. And we leave alone those who are wrong themselves. The kufru and nifaq and fujur. You see, yeah, they are on their knees. But no, why on knees? Humiliated. Because they are being humiliated. They can't. They know when they cross Jahannam, they will fall inside in a state of humiliation. Now, dear brothers and sisters, they have crossed. We are still with this first class Muslim. Allah says, Wasika Ladina Taka Rabahu in a Jannati Zumara Hatta Ida Ya Uha Wafutia Tawabua Wakala Lahu Hazanatu Ha Salamun Alekum Titin Fatu Luha Halidin. And when they reached there, they just joined it silently. Or they say, Wait, where is the kids? The Malaka said, Where is the kids? No. The doors are already wide open. And not only that, they, are, they get a reception. Ahlan wa sallam utkulu. Come, come, my dear. They tell them, Salamun alaikum, peace be upon you. We remember when they were taking the soul in the deathbed in the hospital at home, they were told, Salamun alaikum. Again, now they are told, Salamun alaikum. Pipum. And they tell them, Malaika, tell them, you have done well. Well done. Udhuluha Khalidin. Enter paradise. Oh, you first class Muslims. Enter. Is it an expiry date only for a short time? A short party which will last on two hours or one night? No. Khalidin. There is no expiry. There is no death. Come and enjoy. This is the reception of castless Muslim. Allahumma jalla mihu. And that's why Allah says in another verse, وَزُغْرُفًا وَإِن كُلُّ ذَلِكَ لَمَّا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ إِنْدَ رَبِّكَ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And Allah here says everything 
in the last hour of dunya and akhirah is for nobody else except the God-fearing Muslim, the first-class Muslim that we began with in this khutbah. But now we come, dear brothers and sisters, to the, to the peak. And who are these on the top? Oh, at the top, at the pinnacle. Allah says in Ahadith Al-Qudsi, وعن معاذ بن جبل رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول قال الله عز وجل المتحابون في جلال لهم منابر من نور يخبطهم النبيون والشهداء حديث صحيح رواه الترمذي وامام احمد وصحه الشيخ الالباني now look at this. The cream now, we reach the top. The top of the mountain. Allah himself says in Hadith, in hadith Al-Qusf, Al-Mutahabuna fi jalali, those who love each other, the Muslim who love each other because of my majesty. Not because he comes from the same tribe. Not because he speaks my language. Not because I want a favor, I want money from him. Li jalali fi jalali on my majesty. Lahum manabiri min nur in the paradise. They will not be sitting on sofa set of gold and jewels. Manabiri min nur. Allah will make light into a mass so that they can sit on it. Because they tell you in quantum physics that photons that make up light have got no weight, have got no mass. They are more waves rather than mass. But Allah will change the physics, the nuclear physics on Dawm al Qiyamah, and change light and give it mass, just like neutrons. Allahu Akbar. Allah min Nabi Nur. So don't be surprised. How can I sit on the sunlight? Allah will make them sit. Allah manabili min nur. Yakhbithum nabiyuna wa shuhada. Even the prophets, messengers, will feel envy against these people. And you know, the nabiyuna wa shuhada at a high level. But how come these people, you and me, have reached this high stage? It's because they got this stage by the simplest of means, you come to pray in this masjid. Every day, you sit in a person on your right side. You pray with him five times a day. You don't know even his name. How can you love him? You can't. Because you don't understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, has brought us here in Salatul Jum'ah. Why has brought us together? Because in Hadith Al-Qusi, Lawla, Anna awwalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinsakum kanu ala at kanu ala at qadbi rajilum minkum wa ahdim minkum ma zada dhalika fi mulki shayya. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if the first of you and the last of you, the human of you, the angel of you, were to be very religious, we pray here this Jum'ah, and then we don't go out. We remain here until Asr. And in night, we're just praying. We're just reciting the Quran. We're just doing all this. We, have, we are almost reaching the, the Daraja of Anbiya. It does not increase an inch in my kingdom, Allah says. So you can see why Allah has brought us here. Because we are not increasing his kingdom. Allah is ghani, he is free from every want. It is for our own benefit so that we can come and know each other and navel each other. Is it necessary to love each other? Have you had so many countries? A Muslim drawing, throwing a bomb against a Muslim, killing him. And I don't need to mention there are so many 
where a Muslim right now are throwing a bomb against a Muslim. Tell me if they love each other. Fi Jalalillah for the majesty of Allah. Would they kill a brother Muslim? It's because they don't love each other. They hate each other. And this has happened in many countries before any, for centuries now. I can sit here and mention one country after another. And I won't finish. So you see why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought us together here in this masjid. So you know why Allah has raised these people until they reach Manabir min Nur, Hawl al Arsh. They were sitting across, around the great throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma jalla minum. You see, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these people have superseded even al muttaqun They've got a notch higher, a step higher, because they are sitting on Manabir min Nur, pillars of light, Hawl al Arsh. They surround the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the great throne of Allah in paradise. And the Anbiya wa Shuhada, they envy them. Yaghwithum nabiyuna wa Shuhada. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Aqulu ma astasma'un, astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa lissahil muslimina min kulli dhamb, fa astaghfiru innahu lafuru rahim.